was only about stoichiometric defect. Next is defects introduced by the addition of impurities in solid crystals. When we introduce a foreign material or foreign atoms in a crystal, some of the atoms are replaced to maintain electrical neutrality. Some atoms create empty space lattice positions. That is in case of the charge is imbalanced by the addition of impurity. Third defect is non stoichiometric defects. Inorganic solids which contain the constituent elements in non stoichiometric ratio due to defects in the crystal structure are known as non stoichiometric defects. Now, let's discuss about non stoichiometric defect first this we have in the ionic crystal you saw it's the ideal crystal with proper cations and anions arrangement in 3d space non stoichiometric defects are either due to the presence of excess metal ion or deficiency of metal ions Remember, all crystals will maintain their neutrality. So, when we have a non stoichiometric defect due to excess of metal atoms, it means there will be a counterbalancing negative charges too. For example, addition of a sodium. If we heat a silver chloride with sodium atoms, what happens? Sodium will settle there and there will be removal of certain chloride from the structure. An electron from sodium will occupy that position. So there is a free electron balancing the crystal lattice charge because we have the addition of sodium chloride is removed with heating but electron from sodium is balancing that and remember there we have added a neutral atom neutral atom has given a electron here so by any means neutrality is still maintained because this is a sodium atom that's what we see called a excess of metal ions defect the electrons from the metal occupy this position and the anionic sites in metal excess non stoichiometric crystals occupied by the unpaired electrons, the free electrons. Now these are called F centers. So F centers are electrons occupying the anionic sites in metal excess non stoichiometric crystals. These F centers introduce a remarkable properties in these crystals. You see the yellow color of a crystal of sodium chloride results by the excitation of F center electrons when they absorb energy from visible light. Alkali halides like sodium chloride, potassium chloride show this type of defects, excess metal defects, non stoichiometric. We have a zinc oxide, if we heat it up too much, zinc crystal loses few oxygen, leaving behind two electrons. Oxygen will go, but electrons will remain there. 
So we are having a zinc ions and two electrons occupying the position of our chloride or oxygen position. This is another example of excess metal because zinc will be in excess here. Now another effect known as a deficiency of a metal. What happens here in that few atoms will be lost. So that creates a deficiency of a metal. But charge will still be neutral means the lost positive charge must be compensated by the existing metal atoms. Let's see. Solid crystals which contain less amount of metal atoms as compared to the stoichiometric proportions required. Thus excess negative charge is balanced by the sum of the metal atoms by acquiring excessive positive charge. That's what we see here. We having a iron ox oxide. In this iron oxide, we lost few metal atoms because now this proportion is not exactly one. It's 0.952. One oxygen atom. So the point zero five lost iron atoms, which is Fe two positive, the excess charge. Say now it must balance this two unit of negative charge. So few iron atom would further oxidize to the Fe three oxidation state. Next is crystal under the crystal defects. We know the perfect silicon crystal. We know silicon got a four valence electrons, so it makes it a trial or in mix. It's a very poor conductor of electricity because it don't have any free electrons, covalently bonded on silicon atoms. But when we introduce impurity here, let's say we have added any arsenic or a antimony, the process of adding impurity is known as doping. Here, I arsenic belongs to, belongs to nitrogen family, so it having a pentavalent or five valence electrons. When we introduce it, it has replaced a silicon atom which got 4 electron but arsenic or antimony got 5 electrons so we having 1 extra electron here 4 electrons are utilized for replacing the silicon but extra electron is available in the crystal that extra electron is free to move throughout the crystal that gives a certain negative charge to the crystal that's why it's so called as a negative type silicon or n type silicon there is another sort of possibility when we dope it with trivalent impurity like boron and gallium it creates a positive type semiconductor because we need four electron but it have only three so one empty position of electron is known as a hole this hole is considered as a positive charge although it's not a positive it's a absence of electron so addition of trivalent impurities give us a p type semiconductor addition of a pentavalent impurity gives us a n type semiconductor movement of electrons and holes under electric field opposite to each other 
electrons move toward positive terminal holes will move toward negative terminal for the you know we see under applied electric field the holes will move in the opposite direction to the electrons so far we have finished our point defects now line defects line defects are the irregular or deviation deviations from ideal arrangement in the entire row of the lattice points here you see so you see deviation through along the entire row of the lattice points is like just like a fissure now 